Hey everybody, today we're going to discuss Hexarelin. It's a subscriber requested video as recommended by Rex1151. Here's a special shout out, let's get to it. But real quick guys, if you like the channel, even if you just tolerate us, we are so close to a thousand subscribers, I really appreciate you all just helping us get there. So throw us a like, subscribe, more peptide videos to come, thanks in advance. And before we get started, we'll clarify real quick that this is not medical advice and should not be taken as such. Now, hexarelin is an interesting one, not just because it has plenty of the features we've discussed in many peptides on this channel, but also, and more particularly, because there's some pretty specific cool things about it. So let's start with the name, hexarelin, aka examarelin, aka EP23905, and more simply put as mf 6003. It's a hexapeptide, as seen by the six amino acids on the bottom of the screen, that has previously been investigated by companies Europeptides and Italian pharmaceutical company Mediolanum Pharmaceutica. It's reportedly been evaluated in treatment of growth hormone deficiency and congestive heart failure, though it's hard to find clinical data on the latter. So it is one of the peptides crafted from GHRP6, which is a peptide we've discussed in a recent video, which I'll link in the description below, though it's known to be more potent. The claims of which seem to be based off a small sample study conducted in the late 90s. Not to discredit it, but there hasn't been a ton of info proving it as the more potent growth hormone stimulator. And even though it's passed down anecdotally, just something to consider. Now, what's interesting and unique about this peptide is that many of its physiologic effects are thought to be due to its binding of CD36, a scavenger receptor protein that essentially helps many different cell types engulf or internalize different things. And one of the things that it helps cells essentially bring in is long-chain fatty acids, and thus it's thought to be very pro-inflammatory and pro-atherosclerotic. And thus, a lot of the data that is really anti-inflammatory in nature, although that's very much so a blanket term, is thought to be due to this interaction with this scavenger receptor. So with regards to cardioprotection or protection of the heart, study in rats has shown that hexarelin could possibly decrease ischemia reperfusion injury after heart attacks through decreased production of malandialdehyde, which is essentially a marker of oxidative stress or damage. In another study in mice deficient of ghrelin, which is important to keep in mind since this compound also agonizes the ghrelin receptor, researchers essentially recreated a heart attack and hexarelin administration in these mice created greater cardiac function as measured by cardiac output, ejection fraction, systolic and diastolic function. And furthermore, another study in rats showed that in these rodents with hypertension or high blood pressure, there has been decreased cardiac fibrosis and decreased collagen deposition. Now, what's the data show in regards to lipid metabolism or just metabolism in general? One study has indicated increased free fatty acid metabolism in mice with regards to the single area of white fat production. Another has shown decreased plasma cholesterol in obese mice. And one has interestingly shown that rodents with atherosclerosis has shown regression of these lesions after administration of hexarelin. And just in general, there's been these reports of as well as that ghrelin has function. shown to have antioxidant properties within different cell types, as well as anti-apoptotic properties, so reduction of programmed cell death. So the idea here is that a mimetic of ghrelin, hexarelin, should act like ghrelin, talk like ghrelin, walk like ghrelin, and possess these same properties. Now the part we all despise the most, the risks and the benefits. Let's start with the good here. So perceived potent GH release, sure it's unlimited research, but why not go with it? So there are the perceived effects of such, so increased lean body mass, sleep, which we'll get to in a second, as well as recovery, all these sorts of things that people use growth hormone itself for, as well as this whole idea that it's cardioprotective in nature as shown by pretty significant amount of rodent research, however I'd like to see more 
especially in humans, as well as these thoughts that it improves metabolic function and lipid metabolism through this interaction with pro-inflammatory CD36, and by doing such could improve cholesterol levels and many of these metabolic risk factors. With regards to risks, different studies have shown that people become desensitized to the effects of hexarelin really quickly. So the thought here is that if you're going to use it, you'd have to administer it essentially in spurts. On top of that, multiple studies have shown increased release of ACTH, prolactin, and cortisol after administration of hexarelin. And I'm happy to get into the role of ACTH and prolactin with whoever's interested, but what fascinates me the most here is the cortisol, because increased cortisol production, as many of us know, is associated with not only poor sleep, but also susceptibility to infections, reduced inflammatory response, as well as just gaining of fat and high blood pressure. So I am curious here, if we're thinking about long-term use, these anti-inflammatory effects is mediated through hexarelin's binding with CD36. How does this compare with the pro-inflammatory effects of longer-term cortisol release? These are things to consider. Additionally, as always, with things that stimulate growth, as does ghrelin and hexarelin, we rightly so worry about cancer, because if somebody has a genetic predisposition or may have something already growing that they don't want growing, we probably don't want to promote just holistic growth of tissues. And there hasn't been a lot of long-term data evaluating chronic growth hormone use and release of these growth hormone-releasing peptides with regards to cancer formation. So that's always my biggest fear here. And finally, as with most of the compounds we discuss, there's a lack of human data with regards to these assertions made for cardiac and metabolic health. And I would like to see more research. Are we going to get it? I'm not quite sure. But it's always something important to consider because there are a lot of people making assertions that, hey, hexarelin will definitely do this for your heart or definitely do this for your immune system or your lipid metabolism with this limited rodent research. And I don't think that's appropriate, but I am interested in this compound and I'm hoping that more research is done in the future to see the physiologic effects of its unique binding with this scavenger receptor protein. But that's where we stand at this point. All in all, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care.